The lesson outcome for this video is, I can use function vocabulary and notation. All right, so here are some vocab terms we're going to have to use a lot in this unit. We're going to start here with ordered pair. Now, an ordered pair is a set of two numbers which together shows a position or location on a coordinate plane. This right here is a coordinate plane. We've got our x-axis right here, there's the x, and we've got our y-axis right here. And you've probably used one of these before, and there's going to be a lot more about a coordinate plane on a later lesson. But for now, let's just talk about an ordered pair. An ordered pair is always written as an x and a y with a comma in between and parentheses around it. That helps us determine a location on a coordinate plane. In fact, if I give you an example, let's say 2 comma 5, right there, that is an ordered pair, and there is an agreed upon way to find that location on a coordinate plane. So everybody will plot this point in the exact same location, no matter who you are. So where is 2, two comma 5? Well, it means that 2 is our x coordinate and 5 is our y coordinate. So you'll see that right here is where, all along this vertical line here, is where x is 2, right? Because here's our x-axis, and x is 2 right here. And then up here, where y is 5, right here, where y is 5, everything along this line is a y value of 5. So where does this x value of 2 and this y value of 5 meet? Well, they meet right there. So that is 2 comma 5. And I'll go ahead and put a dot there at 2 comma 5. Oh, I missed a little because it's hard to write on here sometimes. So there's 2, 5. So an ordered pair is an x and a y value written together to show position or location on a coordinate plane. All right, now, the next two terms are input and output. And these are going to relate to this idea of a function as we get um, further along in the lesson. So an input is the x value in an ordered pair. So in this example up here, 2, 5, our input is 2. Oops, is 2. All right. If that number 2 was put in, or input, right, put in, put in, which is why it's called an input, into a function, the output, what comes out of that function, is a y value, and in this case, that y value is 5. So, that is our output for this ordered pair. Now, a relation, sorry, let's see here. A relation is a set of ordered pairs. Typically, a relation is written um, in this way here. We use these brackets, like so, and then we have a bunch of ordered pairs Typically, they have a comma in between them. They don't have to, but typically they will. Um, like this, with a bunch of different ordered pairs in there. So I could say 1, 2, and I could say negative 3, 4. I could say 7, negative 2. So that is a relation. It's a set of ordered pairs. So now domain and range are two, again, connected words. These two words are very connected, and these two words are very connected. The domain and the range are a set of inputs, is a domain, and the range is the set of outputs in a relation. So we just talked about in this point up here, 2, 5, that our input is 2 and our output is 5. So now the domain is the set of all inputs in a relation, like this one right here. So I could now list all of my inputs. So let's um, jot those down. The set of all inputs, so here's an x value right here, and an x value right here, and an x value right here. So our inputs are 1, negative 3, and 7. So that is our domain. Again, our range is that set of all the outputs. So we've got 2, 4, and negative 2. So our set of all outputs, Puts is 2, 4, and negative 2. We'll do a lot of practicing of determining the domain and range um, in a relation and in a function. More on that relationship later. All right, so let's give this one a try. I have in front of you a relation. Again, a relation defined on the previous screen is a set of coordinate pairs or ordered pairs, which is what we have. Remember that your inputs 
Um, all of your inputs put together is called the domain. All of your outputs is called the range. So if you want to just pause the video quick and then jot those two um, answers down, write down your domain, write down your range, and then check back to see how you did, that would be a good start. All right, so you should have written down for your domain, which is the set of all your inputs, 2, negative 3, 4, and 0. Now, a lot of times we are going to end up wanting our domain in numerical order from least to greatest. Um, so another way to write this would have been negative 3. It's the smallest because it's negative 0, 2, and 4. But at this point, you probably just listed this, and that is fine. Our range, the list of all of our outputs, we have 4, 7, negative 8, and negative 5. So 4, 7, negative 8, and negative 5. Again, listing this from least to greatest, negative 8 is the smallest value, then negative 5, 4, and 7. So that is what a domain and range is in a relation. Alright, so one other thing we're going to do is we're going to look at how um, an input and an output relate to each other when it comes to an equation. So right here we've got y equals 3x plus 4. This is showing a relationship between an x value if it was inputted and a y value um, that you get as an output once you put that input in. So to clarify that, so we're going to try to find y, which is our output, when we know that x equals 2. So this is very similar to other units we've already covered this year. If we take this 2 and put it in for x to evaluate this right-hand side of the equation, we will find out what the value of y is. So what we're going to do, we're going to write, we're going to write the equation down, y equals 3x plus 4. Okay, we're going to input this, substitute that in for x. So we're going to write y equals 3, we're going to put that 2 in there, plus 4. So y equals, and we're just going to simplify the right-hand side of the equation, 3 times 2 plus 4. Remember the order of operations is involved here, which is why we've been practicing it. So multiply first and then add. 3 times 2 is 6, and then 6 plus 4 is 10. So when x is 2, y is 10, which means we now have an ordered pair that when we put 2 in for the x value, the output is 10 for the y value. Input, we put it in. Output is what we got out of the equation after we put the 2 in. All right. Why don't you go ahead and do the one below this, and then we're going to see what's behind these rectangles over here because there's going to be something a little bit different over there. So go ahead and do this next example and then we'll check it and go on to the rectangles. All right, so what we needed to do is we needed to put negative 12 in for x. I'm going to again rewrite my whole equation just so that I avoid silly mistakes. So there's my equation. I want to find out what y equals when x is 12 negative 12, pardon me. So hopefully put that negative 12 in there, like so. And again, order of operations, we're going to multiply and get negative 24 minus 1. So y equals negative 25. So our input-output situation here, our input was negative 12, and the output was negative 25. Now, What's behind the rectangles? Well, let's get rid of this one here. So this is exactly the same thing we just did right here. Okay, it's the same equation and we're finding the same thing, but this is some different type of notation that you've probably never seen before. This is called function notation. We read this right here as f of x, the function of x f of x is actually another way to say what? Well, y, right? Because the y that we had over here has been replaced with f of x. So f of x is really just another way of talking about y. 
So we still have y equals 3x plus 4, or we say f of x equals 3x plus 4. And then this says find f of 2. Now I want you to see this here. This x right here, right, has been replaced with a 2, which means that we can simply think about this problem as x equals 2, so what does y equal? Right? Which is what we were doing right here. x equals 2, so what does y equal? And that's what we're going to find, and that's just in a different type of notation called function notation. So again, I'm going to rewrite this whole thing. I'm going to say f of x, f of x equals 3x plus 4. We're going to put this 2 right here in for x in both places. So I'm going to write f of 2 equals 3. What goes in there? 2 again plus 4. Now what a lot of students want to do is they want to think about this as like multiplication, like f times 2. That is not what it is. It's just f of 2 and it stays f of 2. So that's going to stay f of 2 equals, and now we do our order of operations on the right hand side. 3 times 2 is 6, and 6 plus 4 is 10. So f of 2 equals 10. Again, this means that when 2 is our input, 10 is our output. And that's exactly what we got over here as well. So, one last example. Go ahead and try this one on your own using function notation. You'll notice it is the same. Oops, sorry about that. Hold on. It is the same as this. y equals 2x minus 1. So f of x equals 2x minus 1. Find f of negative 12. And there you see it.